Neils. Takes the hand. Sweeney with the City of Juneau Cable Channel 991 here doing an interview with Dodson head coach, head football coach, Doug Miller. Good afternoon. Hi, Bob. It's good to have you back for a discussion. Yes. We're going to be talking about this upcoming season. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about how your season went last year. Okay. And you, want to, you want me to roll with that? I would. Um, we had a good year. And uh, when I sent out my summer letter, you know, I, I, I expressed that a little bit to the kids. But then I said, you know, I also expressed that we know there's other things available for us if we work hard. And, um, you know, an 8-1 finish, but, but we lost first round of the playoffs. Did have some key injuries going in that game. But um, we'd like to, like to move, our, move our stamp up a little bit. Um, we had some great senior athletes that... Uh, that played and, and are gone, you know, from last year's squad. But in high school athletics, it just a revolving door. What goes out, the next one comes in, and, and our kids are ready to to assume their roles and, and to have a good year. Okay. So, how many guys do you have on the team right now? Thirty-four. Is that about what you've had in the past? We've been between in the, the low thirties to the upper thirties. Okay. Uh, I don't think I've been over over. 38, 39. Okay. Um, senior class is always so important in athletics. You know, I think especially in football. Uh, how's your team look as far as how your seniors look this year? We have nine seniors, and all of them should contribute. I mean, they're they all right now are are real tight on starting positions. You know, there's a few that are that are going to still battle, but I would say, you know, there's there's a good number six, seven, eight that that have some spots locked down that will be at least, I mean, they'll be starting and going into the scrimmage and then um, they've got to show what they can do, but but they're all capable of playing at, at our level. And they were uh, on the team last year, all of them? Yes. Okay, so they all contributed some way last year? Yes, they they were all, I mean, some, some went down and helped the JVs, some uh, um, played varsity all the time and were big roles like Jordan Marsh, who was two-way all-conference player. Um, but uh, they they all did their did their work to be ready for their senior year, and, and uh, I'm I'm very pleased with them. Okay. Um, so we talk about uh, individuals. You go go with it. Well, uh, let's go by uh, offense and then go by by position. All right. Sounds great. Um, quarterback, um, Cody Nails, who was a, a defensive starter last year during the, the first four games going into five, um, took over the quarterback job when, when Cody Kutcher broke a, broke a bone in his foot. Um, and, and Cody Nails had a very good second half of the year for us. Uh, he returns with the confidence, knowing that that is his position going in and um, um, has has portrayed that role very well. Um, he's doing a nice job. Ty Bader, who's a sophomore, um, has really worked hard and gives us a great second option in case we, we need to go to it. He's been throwing the ball very well. He had a real nice fitness test, um, put on 20 pounds from last year. He just, he's done a nice job. So we're real comfortable at quarterback. So you have a senior and a sophomore for your quarterbacks? Yes. Okay, and then Ty would be your starter at the junior varsity level? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Running backs. Okay. Um, Dakota Gruen Gruenberg had, uh, was our starting middle linebacker for most of the year and then played fullback in the last couple games and really impressed us. And, and we look at him as, as a true returning two-way player. And so he will, be, he will be our starting fullback. And blocks really well. He's, he's a 
he's a nice ton of bricks, and, and I, I, I would say he's, he's a very, very good blocking fullback, as well as we've had since, since I've been here. And what grade is he? He's a junior. Okay. Um, the tailback, um, right now Dan Moynihan is a senior, and Dan um, gives us this, this flash at tail, and then um, uh, Nate A-Strike, I think, um, I think we'll be alternating him. Nate gives us sort of the, the thunder with speed. Nate, Nate's pretty fast, but he's also 190 pounds and, and is a very physical runner. And, and Dan, who's a little over 150, is pretty fast, but he's also very physical. Um, Dan won our fitness test, so you know, and he had a good bench and he ran really well. What grade are these boys? Dan's a senior, along with his, his twin brother, Matt. And then uh, uh, Nate is a sophomore. A strike. Okay. And so Nate returned uh, kickoff for a touchdown in our last regular season game against Eusisford. And that was pretty important. That was uh, really <laughs> important. Yeah. And and he was a defensive starter about the last three weeks of as the season. As a freshman. As a freshman. Okay. So. So he's got good size. Good size. He's he's physical. Mm -hmm. He's fast. Um, we like, we like those three. Nate can play fullback. Uh, we experimented a little bit yesterday with taking Matt Moynihan out of the wingback mm -hmm. position. And, you know, last year we put him at tail when, when um, Andrew Mountain was hurt. But he's, Matt's very solid. I mean, he's 165 pounds. And so we put him at fullback and we started doing some traps with him inside and some jet stuff like he would normally run from the wingback spot, but out of the fullback spot. And it was fun to tinker. And so Matt is our four-year returning wingback. He started as freshman. Mm -hmm. um, but Zach Schmidt is, is back into football after, after a year of playing mm -hmm. soccer. And, and Schmidt ran 4-6 in the 40. Um, he's a great athlete. He can do just what he'll kick and punt for us. You know, he'll start defensively, and we're going to get him quite a few minutes offensively, especially if we can tinker around with Matt at some other spots. So we've got some nice depth with a lot of speed at these skill positions. Okay. Yeah. So we got to go receivers. All right, receivers. Okay. Jordan Marsh returns as our starting tight end. Had a great year last year. Blocks as well as any lineman we have catches really well. He is a very good tight end. You need to get him the ball. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Zach Younger, he's a 6'4 wide receiver. Need to get him the ball. All of our backs are pretty darn They're good athletes. It's 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 a tough job to have. You know? <laughs> it, we've got good choices just about everywhere, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's good. I mean, it, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. But um, those two guys return. Uh, Derek Anthalt, a senior, backs up at split end. And probably Dalton Pregande or uh, Nick Parr will back up the tight end. Mm -hmm. Dalton we're looking at possibly starting in the offensive line. So um, he, did, he did last year. Um, when we had an injury later in the season, and um, so he's, you know, we got to get our, our best eleven on the field, and mm -hmm. and I think he's one of our best eleven. And then at your tight end, your starter is uh, Jordan Marsh. Yes. Big guy, strong. Big. You strong, played there last year. Fast. Okay. Yeah. And then definitely. you've got tall, real good athlete, junior out at your uh, yeah split. Okay, younger. Younger. Okay. You have any linemen? We have linemen. Um, on paper, coming in, into the season, people would ask me, oh, you know, who's going to be your lineman? And I would just sort of politely smile. I got some ideas, you know, but our line is starting to fold together better than others would expect, about where I expected. Um, last year, Chris Gomez um, played center. And what grade is he? He was a sophomore, so he's a junior this year. Okay. And um, good chance we'll put him at right guard this year. Um, 
right now, Kane Smeedema has been doing most of our snapping. And How great is he? Kane's a junior, and he's had a had a very good off season, and he's growing. So, gives us a good choice there. What makes for a good off season? Lifting, <laughs> lifting, lifting, and maturing. Ah, uh, yes. You know, and and you know, because you've coached a long time that. Um, Kids, some kids look tremendously different from one year to the next. Sometimes they look near the same. Depends on what kind of maturation stage they're in. It is amazing the difference between what you see as a freshman. You're oh. thinking, this guy's never going to be able to play. And he's a stud as a senior. It's just amazing. Yes, yes. And, and, and it's important as coaches that we keep an open mind on, yes. on all these kids. And, mm -hmm. you know, last year if their role wasn't very big, we we go in thinking fresh the next year, mm -hmm. and and let those kids, you know, maturity and dedication, set the tone for what happens this year. Mm -hmm. So, so Kane, Kane's done a nice job, and and he's doing well. You know, we don't have everything scratched in permanent stone yet. Um, Troy Stocky, who started defensively for us last year, um, probably will be at left guard. Uh, we have Frank Huber in that mix of interior people. Frank's a senior, uh, didn't start last year, um, and Frank's matured, and like, like we're talking, a lot of times a kid walks into senior year and just says, I'm going to get it done this year. Mm -hmm. You know, I've got one more chance. And, and so Frank's had very good camps, you know, our, our, our camp in the summer and camp this year. Um, he's doing things better than we saw last year by a lot. So those those kids are, are giving us good competition in, in the in the middle. And you know, if Frank is is deserving to start, I can move Gomez back to center and I can have Frank and Troy at at guards. Mm -hmm. Good choices. Um, Mason Hillsman would also be probably the next one in that interior grouping. And Mason's a junior. Okay. And gives us a solid player. Our tackles, um, our left tackle was manned by, by Tyler Krause for three years, mm -hmm. you know, and Tyler did a nice job, and, but Ryan Nye, who had knee surgery a year ago this summer, and knew he probably shouldn't play football coming fresh off a of meniscus, you know, and it, it wasn't a, a major knee surgery, but it was, was fresh. Mm -hmm. um, so he's out. He's 170 pounds now, and he is one of our most physical kids on the field. Two-time state qualifier in wrestling. Two-time state place, place winner. winner. That's a difference. Yes, yeah. I mean, to do that as a freshman. Right. So, so we picked up an, an athlete that we didn't have last year who's a great competitor. <laughs> You know, and so he's he's looking like he'll play left tackle for us, mm -hmm. and he gets off the ball fast and latches on to people. You know, so so and I and I knew that if Ryan was sure about about being with us, that was probably the route and exactly what I was going to do with him. And uh, you know, I asked him what position. And I wasn't real sure. He said, "Wherever you want to put me, I'll play. I just want to get into people." So. So you know, it wasn't any, I need to play fullback or I want to be a you know, receiver. He just wants to. You know, that's the thing about when I was coaching, I'd ask some of the wrestlers, well, do you mind if I move you up a weight class? Whatever you want, coach. You know, those are the kind of guys you want. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and for Gandhi, it's the same thing. I mean, he's probably a typical tight end kid. Mm -hmm. And I said to him last week, I, you know, we were talking about position, I said, Dalton, if something happens to Jordan Marsh and you're playing in, in, in the line, it'd be real easy to slide you back to tight end. Mm -hmm. That being said, we want to get our best 11 kids on the field. He says, no problem. Mm -hmm. you know, okay. Want to win. Right tackle. Um, right now, one of the, the, the nice surprises in, in camp has been Anthony Brueger. He's getting big. He's getting big. Yeah, he doesn't have tremendously fast feet, but he has a tremendously fast first step. He is extremely smart, and he is playing as physical as 
far more than we expect him. He's been a, a nice bright spot. And what grade is he? He's a junior. Okay. With him, and we just started moving, moved him over there because he's more of a defensive mind kid, but Mitchell Cruckton. Uh, Mitchell moved to us from Beaver Dam last year, and, and so good talent, 6'2", 190, 95. Um, you know, but, but last year, everything was new to him. Friends, living, every, everything was new to him, you know. And, and he played and had a good year, but, but you know, played JV, and this year now he's sort of gotten comfortable with every, everything, and he's gotten a little more physical. And so he gets off the ball well. Um, maybe if he starts defensively, he'll back up our tackles and give us a great next choice. So you have a younger line this year than you had last year? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. But you think you've got something you can work with there? I'm, yeah. I, I'm certainly not complaining. I, okay. I like the kids. I like how they're approaching it. They understand that if our line performs well, we've got a good chance to do well. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's where the game is won or lost. Okay. Defense. Defensively. Um, some similar names, but some, some other ones. Um, we return both Moynihan's. Either of them can play outside linebacker, where sort of we, we might open the scrimmage with right now. They can both play corner. Comes back into center on this play. Takes the hand up. Nails. Three step drop. Throws across the middle. So, you know, we've got, if we've got better outside linebackers, we can slide them back. If, we, if we've got a passing team, they can pick people up out of the backfield. Um, they're pretty solid. And right now, they're they're the two that we're looking at outside linebacker. Um, Pergandi is, is, and these are all seniors, Pergandi is sitting there, um, we're almost waiting to see what we need the most because he's very versatile. He can play middle linebacker, he can play outside linebacker, he can play defensive end. So we're, we're sort of saving the pencil on him just to see what we, what we maybe find we need. And we'll, you know, we'll figure that out during our scrimmage a little bit more. So when we get get to see somebody else, um, outside linebackers and staying with sort of this linebacker phase, um, Brendan Jordan is another one that came into camp, and he had a good regular, good summer camp. He had good regular camp, but. But yesterday we did some one-on-one -on -one stuff because we were second day in full pads and um, a little running the ball, some tackling, and he just stood out. And he is very instinctive, so we knew all those things, but, but his physicality um, we didn't see last year, and, and it's going to be hard to keep him off the field. He did, did a nice job. I mean, What grade is he? He's a junior. Okay. Um, our middle linebackers, that could be, well, one of them would be Dakota Grunberg. He started there last year. <laughs> Score a touchdown on this drive. Handoff. This is... Um, Nate A-Strike. Probably will will start there along with him, but um, we've we've got an awful lot of defensive end type kids, and there's a possibility Jordan's sort of nursing a little bit of a sore hamstring right now. But there's a possibility we may look at moving Jordan, Jordan and Marsh, okay. and seeing what he can do as a middle linebacker, and let Ryan Nye and Mitchell Crookton and 
or Gandhi, those guys play defensive end. Depends on how big a load a strike ends up offensively, whether or not I want him playing middle linebacker as a sophomore, doing okay. both those. But good choices. Oh, okay. um, so th those are those are our linebacker looks, our defensive ends, and I, I sort of touched on, but um, Ryan Nye, uh, Mitchell Crutchton, and, and Mitchell's a defensive end probably first, a defensive tackle, but he could play either, you know, and, and there again, he's going to be a kid that we're going to have on the field in a, in a starting position. It's just not quite sure what those two and, and how it all falls together. Um, Chris Gomez stood out in one-on-one uh, in -on -one when the offensive and defensive lineman. I mean, he was, he was, he was our best, and, and everybody knew it. And he's your biggest guy on your team? Yeah, and he had our best bench, and um, he's wrestled heavyweight the last two years. Mm -hmm. um, and now he's a junior, and I, I, he's ready to step up into that next level. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he'll be, he'll be one of our starting defensive tackles. Troy Stocky started at defensive tackle last year, so we got another good choice. Then we go a lot of depth here because we go Smedema and Huber, we still got Bruger that, that, I mean, we've got a lot of defensive tackle type kids that have had, mm -hmm. that have shown pretty well so far. Well, good. And then our, our secondary, younger returns at safety. The L's in the side, they motion Keel to the near side, and they have the center of Brooks, I can see it. Moves right, and that cuts left. Schmidt, he'll be at a he'll be at a corner, um, and then uh, I think we'll open up the scrimmage with Derek Anthal, senior who moved into the starting lineup in basketball last year as a junior. Um, but be a lot of competition. Cameron Nelson, who's a sophomore, running back, wing back, one of our fastest kids, went to camp, lifted hard. He's he's making sure we know he wants a spot too, you know. <laughs> How much does he weigh this year? Cameron? Yeah. He's about 155. Is he that big? Now? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's he's, he's pretty, pretty right. He was he's, pretty he's, small last year. He's different. Okay. Yeah, he's pretty right. thick across the shoulders and okay. he was second in our fitness test. Hmm. And you know, it went Dan Moynihan and then it went Cameron Nelson and then it went Matt. Hmm. Five points difference. You know, like, 330, 325, hmm. 320, so. Is everybody so, on uh, offense and defense? That's quite a few, yeah. Okay. I didn't even look at notes. <laughs> well, uh, you have a kicking game. We do. You need one. Yes. And we had an awfully good, good oh, kicker punter last year. You sure did. You know, he really made a big difference in yeah. games. I think I'm going to have another one. Really? Schmidt. Placement kicking really has been good. Well, you know, he's played soccer since he's yes. been this tall. Yeah, I mean, he has he has the natural stroke. He understands you know, foot placement. And, I mean, it, it wasn't very difficult to get him to be kicking the ball, well, you know, just let's do this, this, and maybe you should just slide this way. Okay, we're done. Go ahead, you know. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Ty Bader has been, been his main holder. Um, you know, we use nails a little bit, but Ty's just a little more comfortable. I think being right-handed, catching and spinning like that is a little easier than being left-handed and spinning mm -hmm. with your right and comfortable. I don't know, but, but, yeah. 
but sometimes it's nice because then you can take your backup quarterback and he can hold while you while a kid warms up and mm -hmm. stuff, and the other one can be doing his, his other. But um, and Schmidt, Schmidt will probably punt too. Um, that hasn't been quite as natural, but we haven't given it a ton of time. And yesterday, right near the end, changed the way he holds the ball and keep the nose down and and he pops some some really nice ones so yeah. I mean he's a talented kid he'll he's figure it out. He's a very good athlete. Yes yeah yeah that I mean to get him and and to get uh, Brian Nye as mature good junior senior athletes you know that was a big plus for us this year. Mm -hmm. Well you need somebody to return the ball. We got a whole bunch of those. <laughs> you can you can take your pick. I mean, we, the one thing we have, I mean, we're not tremendously big on paper, but you know, Schmidt, Dan Moynihan, Cameron Nelson, Matt Moynihan, Nate A. Strike. I mean, they can all they can all do it, and I think uh, if I had to, you know. Younger could return punts and could return punts very well. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of choices. We, you know, okay. Hard, hard not to have a strike back there somewhere on kickoff return at least. <laughs> <laughs> the last time he touched it, yeah. it looked pretty good. It sure did. <laughs> so you know, and Matt might have had somebody yeah. they've kicked away from for a couple of years now. And, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, you have some games coming up. Who's your first uh, game against? We have uh, an opponent that's new on our schedule, like in the last couple days. Um, we have Stephen Point Pacelli, and um, uh, our opponent that was supposed to be, Marion Tigerton, backed out of our deal and um, didn't let us know. And Pacelli's first game opponent dropped football. Westfield for the year, so uh, we were able to hook up with them and we'll play them Saturday, August 19th at 1 o'clock at Gerke Field, which is the UW Stevens Point field. Mm. And we'll get a chance to play on turf. And okay. um, Do you know anything about this team? Um, record wise, um, they've not been above 500 in the last three, four years, but um, they play in a league that's probably right now the premier league depth-wise. You know, Amherst leads that. You know, they were state champs two years ago. Um, they've been in the state finals a couple years. Shy Octon, really good football school. Bondwell, really good football school. They play. Bondwell plays in Division Four. Um, Iowa Scandinavia, which was in our bracket, and I was, I was fine with not having to draw them, even though they were a six and three team regular season. But they had to play Shyock and Bondwell, so they they play in that league, and um, and they'll be they'll be a good opponent. Yeah. Okay. Then your next game after that, we will host Cambria Friesland. Okay. So we will get. We will get two good looks. You know, Jim Bilesma in Cambria has done a historic job over there, really. I mean, what he's done with that, that small school. He gets in Division Seven, and he's still one of the smallest schools in his division. And all they do is continue to win and continue to win. So um, that's been a great game for us, no matter what the score is, just because we come out of there a better team. Okay. Third game? Third game is Palmyra Eagle. And uh, we will host host them. Um, and that will be played uh, Friday before Labor Day weekend. School doesn't start till the Tuesday after Labor Day, so we'll have three games in before the end, end of the, or before the school starts. Mm -hmm. you know? and unfortunately, unfortunate the state still schedules it that, that way, but to have a third of our season gone before the student body walks in the door. Yeah. After Palmyra Eagle, we play Marcusan. 
This sounds very similar to last year's schedule. It's the same thing. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, just flipping the flipping the site. So we'll have Marcus Ann here. Okay, and they're the two time conference champions, is that correct? Yes. All right. Yeah. And what's this team gonna be like this year? This might be their best team. <laughs> Ouch. Um Carson Clark is a four year starter at quarterback. Um they have um, Bernhagen kid, who is a three or four year starter, but but um, highly regarded around the state as maybe one of the best wingbacks, return kids in the state. So they've got, you know, they lost a few linemen, you know, but but I think their program is is solid. That they're they've got kids that are looking to step into their program mm -hmm. when the time is. Um, I know they have a very good, bigger, faster, stronger weight program through their FIED um, in the high school, and they just keep. Um, this senior class up there is one of their best athletic classes they've ever had, isn't it, as far as you know? It's awfully good. Yeah. And, yeah, I mean, unless you go back to um, like the mid to later 90s when they had those great, great basketball teams mm -hmm. up there that but you know yeah. these guys have been playing varsity football since forever. It seems like yes, yeah, and, and they have yeah, I mean, at least forever is as long as I've been here. Yeah, four years. It's, uh, it's my fourth year, and I've you know so. <laughs> same names. Yeah, yeah, it's not hard to recognize. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's going to be a tough one. That'll be that'll be a good game. Yeah, yeah. and you know, last year they jumped all over us. Um, don't know if I can put a finger on what happened, but. But that wouldn't have happened two weeks in a row. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. you know, uh, the year before we had them where they wanted, and they and they they found a way to win the ball game. Mm -hmm. But we played very well against them. So okay, then after Marcus in? I believe we have um, Orfordville Parkview. No, we we have Pittsville. Is that right? So you know anything that, about Pittsville? They have. Uh, they have a running back who placed second in the 200 at state, maybe. I mean, so they they've got a, they've got a kid that mm -hmm. that can run. Um, at Waterloo, I played Pittsville back in the early 90s, and they had a great tailback, Chad Lilly, a 46 foot triple jumper and six one, 195 pounds. And and they and we had a, we had a fun game there. We played. I think it was a. 12-10 game that we got beat in last minute, but but it was it was a very good game. Mm -hmm. So I think they've got a, a decent group coming back, and um, uh, that should be a good non-conference game for us. And that's a home game. That's a home game. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll play Parkview, um, and I'm you know Parkview we were without Cutcher, but Andrew Mountain also came up to me after the Tri County game and said my hand's a little sore. And when he had x-rays, it was fractured, and he missed the, the Parkview game, and they cleared him to play with the club mm -hmm. last year. Um, so I remember going into the Parkview. It was a good team. Um, and, uh, you know, without two of my best seniors, two of my, my, my mm -hmm. two best seniors, and going, ooh. <laughs> and kids, males, Came through with, with with a nice pass, and Matt Moynihan went to tailback, and um, and Matt can play anywhere. Last year we didn't have the blocking wing back like Moynihan gives us, you know, and, and so Moynihan w was fine, but it was just we had, we had a lot of people moved around. It was just mm -hmm. a little different, and but we still we were able to come through. So so Parkview. You know, we're still learning about them a little bit. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what, what we have to deal with, I guess. And, and you go I'm there not, this year? We go there. I'm not looking that far down. <laughs> you <laughs> I know. understand. But, yeah. but um, you know, um, Partyville sort of been the, they'll be the next opponent. They're in, the, in that same boat. I think they changed coaching staffs. Again? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Mark Hallberg, I think, resigned and they... They hired somebody, I think, from within. Uh, Palmyra Eagle has a new coach too. So, mm. you know, when we were at Palmyra, I think we beat them forty-two to nine. But when you looked at their kids, I was like, they were huge. They were 
fast. Um, they had some really, they have a really talented quarterback coming back, 6'3", 190 pound kid that throws well. But as a spectator, a person watching who has coached before, yes, I look at the teams that they're not a well coached team. When I when I watched Palmyra, it, exactly. yeah, they, they're good athletes, but they're not being right. coached very well. No, I mean we, we noticed that from the film the week before, and 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 then when we watched our film afterwards, I mean, but so now they have a new coach. We'll see what you know it. That, that unknown out there of mm -hmm. there's good athletes walking around and I would have liked them to keep their other coach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. And Man. so Party, Partyville's in the same boat. You know, I mean, okay. there's some athletes there. Mm -hmm. I, I think, um, you know, not as many coming back with, with name recognition, but, but that's an athletic town and um, you know, if you bring in the right person. You know, well, Partyville for years had been one of the stronger teams in the conference, you know, and oh, yeah. constantly, you know, one, two, three, you know, and making the playoffs. One, two. Yeah, one, two. Right. Yeah. But like you say, you start switching coaches all the time. That makes right. it hard to win. But Mike Haynes did a great job there when he was there, you know. Then you have Montello, Princeton, Princeton and Green Lake. Huh? Green Lake, yeah. The Phoenix. Yep. And. They had a few kids hurt when we played them last year, and, and we handled them pretty fast, pretty well last year, but... You know, before the game started, I was talking up in the press box to some of the guys who were working up there, and they talked about how they were switching people from position to position to position. They were switching coaches' positions. I thought, whoa, is this ever disorganized? And it showed on the field. Yeah, and, and, and I, I, I think the reason why they were switching, switching is things weren't falling into place, mm -hmm. you know. Um, sometimes you have to do that. Sometimes that's the worst thing you can yeah. do because if they're not falling in, into place, maybe you've got to stay put and just coach and let them get drill, comfortable. Drill, drill, drill. Um, yeah. yeah, but that was easily the worst, the most disorganized conference team I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, they had two kids hurt early in our game, you know, which now you got to switch something else and, and then... And then they yeah, were, uh, just, they couldn't run against you, so they were passing like crazy, and their quarterback was throwing the ball in the dirt almost every time he threw it, so it, yeah. it didn't look good. It surprised me because they had been one of the stronger teams in the conference for, you know, ever since they right. tried try opt. And it's know. the same coaches. Yeah. 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 Okay, and then you have Houston, uh, Horicon Houston for your last game again. Yeah. yeah. Now you told me last year they were going to be one of the better teams in the conference. And you didn't believe <laughs> and me. And I didn't believe you. And all you had to you do, were certainly right. All you had to do is look on paper last year, and each school sort of complimented the other one on what the other one needed. Mm -hmm. You know, and... Uh, both schools had more returning kids coming back individually than we had. So they, you know, I mean, they had a lot of kids to pick from. They had, you know, and they were all, and it, you know, it's been a good blend for them. I mean, they're sort of like that Montello, Prince, and Green Lake. They have a lot more, more students I'll, to pick from. I'll tell you what, that was one of the most fun games I have ever watched. You know, your team dug a hole in that first quarter, yeah. and they just kept battling back. And then Houston's Ford, or uh, Horicon Houston's Ford would score again, and you would. That was really a fun game to watch. Glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> but it was fun to watch. Yeah, too. I mean, it was a fun game to win. Yes. But oh, I got old <laughs> during that two and a half hours. It was. I mean, they go down and score in the first minute kick, we mishandle the kickoff, and then best running back in the conference goes the wrong way on a quick pitch. Oh. And the ball lays there on the one yard line and they recover it and you know, all of a sudden, less than two minutes in the game, we're down 14-0. Right. We respond and score, and then they come back down and score. Right. Uh, I mean, you had an interception in the end zone by Matt, yeah. right? Brought it out to the 20. And like you say, you had that uh, kickoff return by by a strike, right. just two huge plays in that game to, you know, yeah. kind of turn around, get you back into it. 
Yeah. yeah. And they had theirs too. I mean, that's true. You know, I mean, that's it was, true. That's, you know. they, it was just a wonderful game to, as a spectator right. to watch. Yeah. Um, so, what's the team going to be like this year? Houston Sport? Horicon Houston, Houston Sport, yes. They return the quarterback, their tailback. Um, Really good receiver, uh, this Keel kid uh, out of Houstonsburg. Mm -hmm. So they blend up pretty nice. I mean, they lose some some name kids. Um, really good big lineman, um, another good back. You know, but you know, we did too. Right. Right. And we plan on replacing those kids, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure they do. They do too. That. Mm -hmm. um, and the coaches are the same as last year. As far as I know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so, they, you know, they'll, they'll, I think they'll have a very good year this year. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you have some assistant coaches. I do. They're very good. Yeah. Tom Selkert, who's been, who grew up in Juneau, left to Broadhead for about a year and a half, he was, he's telling me. I met him in college. Um, and at that time, he had his last football stint had been with Broadhead. So I always thought he was born and raised and grew up in Broadhead, you know. And then, then he landed here, you know. Um, but I knew Tom from 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 college, and then um, then Tom and I coached against each other when when he, when when he was coaching here, and we had kids coming through similar times. Mm -hmm. um, so Tom runs our defense and uh, does does a really nice really nice job and gives us very good gives me very good stability on a, on a staff that, uh, that uh, I'm very fortunate that he was here when when I was looking at this I mean he was the guy I called and said okay this is something I I should look at and and what do you think and um, Gave me good advice. Told me to come on over. So, okay. Um, then I have Quinn and and Derek Peeper, um, and that has been really good, and it gets better every year. Um, and the more we get familiar with each other, there's times I still do, but there's times I probably wouldn't have to draw practice plans because. They know what I want to do on that day. They know what I want to do day one of the mm -hmm. camp now. I mean, um, and the students have really responded to those two guys, haven't they? Yes, I mean those guys are in the weight room all the time. They're 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 fun people to be around. They're disciplined. Mm -hmm. They work hard. They love the sport. Um, oh, good. Yeah, and then uh, uh, my we've got a guy that that helps us in the booth, Dante Keel. And that we think he'll be able to come this year, but that's that's what he does. He just helps spot for for us. But then my my true fifth assistant um, is a young man by the name of Tyler Richards, and Tyler's a student here at Dodgeland. Um, and I had him in weightlifting two years ago, which would be not this past summer, the summer before. Mm -hmm. And I tried like heck to get Tyler to come out and. That's not one of his interests, you know. Well, then I, I pose a question. Uh, I could really use somebody. Once I found out he's tech savvy like nobody else, <laughs> and I just, you know, would you be interested in doing this? Because uh, that's a deficiency of mine, you know. I, that stuff doesn't come easy to me. And, oh, I love. Yeah, I'd love to. So he films. He does. He logs all our film onto Huddle. He. Um, does exchanges with other coaches. He does special jobs for me during the week. Um, that has really been been a neat thing for me to have. Okay. And uh, and I think he gets something out of it too. But but um, he's been really good. And so we we when when last year I, I had to type the roster into huddle, it was Coach Richards. And so. Oh, no, good. No one else. So did they quote Richards? Okay. <laughs> good. Well, any last words? Just happy to be back. I'm. Uh, I've been very impressed with my time here. Um, 
our district uh, has treated me tremendously well. They, um, you know, they want kids to have an opportunity for success, and um, it's it's been it's been a lot of fun for me. So hopefully, I can keep this. We can keep this relationship going for a while. But, uh, uh, the kids I get here are second to none as far as quality kids, you know. Just a lot of, it's been a lot of fun for me, so. Well, very good. Look Thank forward you. to a little more. Very good. Thank you.